and welcome back to Design Tech. I'm not gonna say Design Tech Monday anymore because as statistics shows, I never ever keep that deadline. So I will post when I'll be posting and I hope that you will stay tuned by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. Since for now I can't make any weekly promises or a specific date and time when I will be posting my next video. It has to do a lot with inspiration, with uh, time and time management. And since spring is here, summer is around the corner, my time is gonna be more and more consumed by outdoor activities. However, Easter is coming up and probably this is the first time I am actually doing a video and presenting something before the actual Easter holiday. Whether it's the Catholic or the Orthodox Easter, which this year happens to be one month apart, it's very important to do your own decoration. As tradition has it, we would paint eggs and do all sorts of crazy bunny egg decorations. Last year, I went on a journey to do my own decoration exactly around Easter, and I came up with this. I call it eggs and bunnies. So today's question regarding design tech is what does a 3D printer, Play-Doh and clay, air drying clay have in common? Stay tuned to find out and how you can implement these three tools to do some of your models. For this video, if you want to follow along or do something similar, you will need a 3D printer, Play-Doh, clay, 3D printed molds, water, and the brush. The clay always needs to be kept in an airtight sealed bag. Now, IKEA bags are very good for that. One of the comments, let me just finish sealing this up. Oh, you need one more thing. That is right. Let me get that. Another thing you will need is an X-Acto knife. The idea came to me last year when I wanted to do a specific Easter decoration. I had a lot of fun modeling my eggs and bunny, uh, which the egg shape was actually quite easy to model, but don't be fooled. There's actually a mathematical formula to draw this egg shape, which I will post here. And also I will post the link in the description below if you want to check it out and save it for later. So I drew the egg, which was quite simple, but what was very complicated to do was these two ears. They are quite organic because this is a 3D printed model. They are quite lightweight. They are the same height as the egg. The egg happens to be uh, the same scale as a egg you normally buy at the grocery store. And it is quite nicely balanced. This is very lightweight. One of the comments I got with this and in regards to this model last year was that unfortunately it was not um, made out of clay and that it's just plastic and it's 3D printed. It doesn't matter if the plastic is eco or not. Fair enough people. So this year it got me thinking what about and how hard can it be to make it out of clay? Now, clay molding is not something that anybody can do, especially if you need it or if you're using the one that needs to be uh, baked in an oven, in a specific type of oven. I have actually played with that before. I find it quite an interesting technique and process of creation. However, again, it's not accessible for everyone. Luckily, hobby shops do have this thing called an uh, air drying clay. That means in 24 hours, it's gonna be 
properly stiff. The first thing I did was to take my eggs and bunny, this one, and actually model a negative. Again, the tricky part was not to cut out the egg, but it was the ears because I wanted to get this depthness into it. And that was the most challenging part because I had to re-script everything and rethink how to do the cut. The first thing that I've noticed was that I needed extra depth here. As you can see, the original 3D printed part is quite thin here. And I actually did a test yesterday, which you can see here. We'll talk about that in a second. And that with 3D printing is not a problem because the drawing is instant, which is quite nice. However, when working with clay, the story is a little bit different. Now, I made this big mold, which is the same scale, and used first and foremost to test Play-Doh. It's very important before you go off ruining expensive clay to use something that is quite easily moldable and that it's quite easy to play with such as Play-Doh, right? To test if my theory works and to develop this process, first I rip two smaller pieces that I make sure to sort of play with and make them a little bit more consistent. And then make something like this, which goes specifically into the ear. Now I know the ears are sort of flat pressed, so I'm not that, uh, worried about needing here a curvature of any kind. However, as I said, it would be very good if these are, you play with them a little bit, so they have a sort of consistency. However, for the egg shape, you kind of need an egg shaped. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult with clay because clay is not as moldable or as easy to sort of squeeze in your hands as you have sort of Play-Doh. But even here you can create these gaps. I'm not sure exactly how not to have them and how to sort of press them nicely so they don't create this uh, ugly cuts. I don't know if it's for press or just sort of rotating until I'm tired of it. So you, oop. <laughs> you do something that looks a little bit like an egg. Press it a little bit in, but not too much. By the way, uh, please use a flexible table. This is just something improvised for show and tell. And then what you do is you press. You might want to make sure that it's aligned on the sides. Again, this is Play-Doh. It's quite easy to sort of press into shape. And then of course you have extra material that in the case of a Play-Doh, you can instantly just take away put it back into the box. Now, one big difference between Play-Doh and clay is, as I said, this is quite easy to work with. And now we're gonna remove the top. And because I haven't molded it uh, or like um, played with it properly and pressed it properly, you have these cracks. Personally, I kind of like them. They give a certain allure. But I need to get better at this and figure out what is the right system to sort of avoid getting these little cracks. However, in clay, it's a little bit more fixable. While you have the rabbit in this form, and this actually works with clay too, I would recommend taking the X-Acto knife and going around the shape. The one thing you will notice is that the ear, that the bunny ears don't have any stability compared to the ready 3D printed bunny or the clay made bunny. So for the time being, I will put this pink bunny here 
so it could rest its pink glossy ears onto the mold and put this aside. For the purpose of this video, I actually did a test run yesterday on the same mold and this is the result I came up with. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of uh, cracks and apparently that is because I haven't sort of played enough with the clay and I haven't sort of pressed it properly. Some people think that the cracks might also be too, too much thickness or not enough water, I'm not sure. But the truth is I kinda liked it cracked like this because it gives it an extra weird texture which is quite interesting to me. The purpose of this test, first of all, was to see if the mold is helpful, first of all. Second of all is to see if the connection or this mold offers enough stability between the ears and the egg once it's dried. And as you can see, it's all good there. Except the cracks, I think I did a pretty, pretty good job with this. Uh, I actually tried to smoothen out a little bit with water yesterday, which gave some results, but maybe I should have insisted a little bit more. Having the small ears who, or like the fragile ears who have the same sort of uh, consistency as the Play-Doh right here, uh, it's a little bit hard to sort of take it out and just play with the shape itself. But once it's dry, there's no problem. I heard actually that sanding paper is probably one good solution to smoothen out the rough edges. So I am going to try that on the next models that I'm about to do. Um, and to finish it off, what I would like to add is a little bit of paint. So after I will do a couple of mini bunnies, I will try my best to go out and see if I can find some acrylic paint to use for the bunny, right? The trick with this is to get the egg out. And that's why there's this sort of part here in the middle which was easier with the big bunny because it wasn't so glued and I don't want to hard press it which I already did damn it how am I supposed to get you out Oh wow, this is stuck. Or it's not. This gave me the illusion of stuck. I'm not very happy how this turned out, people. But technically it's an egg shape, so let's see if we can fix that a little bit. By pressing it again. Hmm. Disappointment is a word I don't like to have in my vocabulary. And because I, uh, yeah, I think we have to do it again. And what I would like to do now is use this as an egg shape simply. Um, which I am going to flatten out with a little bit of water, as I said, just like this. And then I'm gonna use some, uh, this is a very small egg. I'm gonna make this so cute. Okay. I'm gonna try and do this again. So this is gonna be one drying egg right there. It's not what I was going for, I might add. Now, this bunny is going to go to sleep. So this is a sad bunny. I think I'm going to need more clay to do the big shapes. So again, this comes as a fully saturated. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to remove the middle part. Initially, it used to look a little bit more square like that. 
Okay, we're gonna take a little bit more clay. And see if we're going somewhere with this. With the one that's remaining, we're gonna seal it nicely in a bag. One thing that I heard one should do is cut the clay at the joining points. So it kind of joins. And now I only have to sort of mold this big chunk of uh, clay. Although I never understood how do I have to mold something and take the air out of something that came ready packed sealed. That makes no sense. By the way, this is horrible for your posture if you don't have a good posture to begin with. However, you can see this is the clay color and that's the dry clay. Now, in certain lights, it does seem different, but this is a little bit more vibrant than this. It's actually disappointing <laughs> color-wise once it's um, dry. I was expecting it to be more um, towards this sort of wet concrete look. More terrazzo, more interesting, but it's not. You don't want to press too hard on this top because you still need to let the form do its job. As you will see, this is where you need somebody who can actually use their proper wrist strength, not like me, to press and press. However, I can always take it out a little bit, take off some of the excess. I think this is the best I'm going to get for now. Okay. So let's see if I can get this bunny out of the hole while I still have something to catch on. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, so the ears are flopping out. Woo! We have a bunny out. See? Ah, God, it's starting to break. It's starting to break. So uh, because I did that move, I applied a little bit too much pressure on this side uh, here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of water and press and probably a little bit of grunge material here and there as a reinforcement to see if that helps in any way to sort of sizzle in the shape. And since this is in place, I feel I'm going to press it and hopefully it's not going to stick and I can get it out again. Ooh, no, no, please press it in the right place. Do you know those wooden tools that you use to keep the wood together? I think that would be very benefic. And of course it's stuck again on the other side. 
Why am I not surprised? That's what happens when you have so fragile parts. Oh, no, 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 no. I scratched my bunny's belly. belly. I have clay stuck on one side. It works better with a larger form, apparently. And for the small form, I should just maybe keep the eggs. But this is not okay. Okay. So it does not work in the small form. Uh, you saw it live. I've tried two different ways. If you know another way that could actually be proper, let me know. Because I have no idea what I am doing right now. This is an experiment. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's see if I can take the ears off. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you out of there. So, one, one ear out. Let's see. Can I get the other one? Yes. Perfect. And they're nice and pressed. Now, I will clean the sides. And what I would like it to do is let it sit for an hour or so before I flip it in the other direction and clean it again. But it needs to sit a little because this is way too wet right now. Especially here in the margins and I already see where a crack can happen, will happen probably. I don't do something about it. Now, uh, what I've done with that bunny, especially on the sides, was to take the brush and start sort of going around the edges. But as I said, That can also be done by um, by sanding it with some sandpaper. But I would like to start cutting it out now. So we take one worry off the table later because I only know how it reacts in that case, I don't know how this one will turn out. And if I added too much water, you said you can't have too much water, hmm? Oh, the plastiline bunny ears broke. 3D printing wins. Okay, so what I did was I was I take a little bit of water and basically I do this and try to finish off the edges a little bit. But this, as I said, also comes with a risk of getting stuff stuck. So every sort of couple of hours I have to rotate it, look at it, maybe add or remove water from the process remove I mean there's no way to remove it I just like wait for it to dry but this is the way you sort of finish it off or at least that's what all the YouTube videos say of people who are awesomely skilled in creating clay stuff if I figure out or I manage to figure out this technique and make it work I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun 3d printing molds uh, and tools because I'm not crazy enough to pay for some plastic tools when I can make my own but apparently I'm not as good at creating um, or understanding how to work with clay so I might need some help from some of my friends who have done this before and have a clue of what the hell they're doing to show me a little bit or like explain to me what's the best way to work with this material 
because if I had to explain how PLA, which is the material we use most commonly in 3D printing works, I have no problem in explaining temperature, layer heights and all that jazz, but these are exotic materials to me. Yeah, yeah, I know they've been used since the beginning of time, seriously. Okay, uh, I am way out of my depth here. And this is gonna be one thick here, right here. I'm gonna cut you off a little bit here. This is gonna be a very chic, interesting bunny once I'm done with it. <laughs> so we have our egg, which is drying right now. Our mini bunny failed and we will wait for the big bunny, which is this one, which has a beautiful color, to dry and see what we did uh, bad or good this time. The difference between this and this is that I added a little extra depth here for the back of the ears. Although it looks fragile, it's actually quite stable and sturdy, this little thing. I'm going to weigh it in phase two and tell you how much it weighs, but this is going to be a prototype. I call it a uh, cracked egg and bunny. And hopefully after I come back from the store where we can continue phase two and see if we can add a little bit of acrylic gold leafing to this baby right here because I'm not going to ruin a good bunny for it. And maybe I'll get the dust clay. I think it's called dust. I'm sure it's called dust clay. And see if there's a difference between that one and this one. Who knows? So let's continue with stage two. <laughs>